Hi, jungle friends. I am in the middle of a rainstorm right now and very thankful uh, for the opportunity to be able to discuss one of the most important topics in planetary science, in Earth in general, and also in the future of survival for all life on our planet. Um, so we are looking at a picture here of how most people see the jungle, uh, the Amazon jungle. Um, and I wanted to uh, look at it from this perspective because actually the population is primarily centered around the back door of the jungle and in the deepest part of the jungle um, is actually humanity right now. Um, and we wanted to look at this very carefully and very cautiously. Um, I was thinking as I was walking home in the rain as it just started and now it has picked up significantly. We very rarely get rainstorms in my town and this is a unbelievable opportunity to discuss the jungle. And if you are uh, looking into the details here, um, actually, uh, the jungle starts uh, kind of in Florida, uh, and also uh, in Brazil, uh, a lot of the people actually live uh, down here in Rio and Sao Paulo. Um, and then there's kind of an area in Bolivia here of Santa Cruz, uh, which we've discussed as well. But what I wanted to emphasize here is that the topics, um, I just had a conversation with a friend of mine, and it was kind of just getting way important um, and I just had to lead the conversation uh, and come here to talk about this uh, because the jungle is unbelievably it, it, it's just out of my imagination uh, in terms of what we're discussing here and the even more unbelievable part is the ocean uh, and basically the coral reefs and the diversity in our Earth's ocean. Um, but really, uh, we have to start by looking at both. Um, and here we see uh, the Caribbean, uh, all these volcanoes and different earthquakes kind of spinning around in this circle here, uh, and basically heading right into the top part of the jungle. So. First of all, why are you listening to this, right? So this is a topic that's going to matter not just 100 years from now, but for the entire future of the Earth. Um, so basically, the equator is not going to change uh, for a very long time. It's unlikely. Uh, and basically, the climate is going to be most warm uh, in these regions. Let me add these climate maps. I'm sorry about this. So... How do we look at the jungle, right? Uh, so I have a number of images that we're going to go through. Uh, there's basically just a, a lot here to discuss. So uh, I, I'm going to try to go through this very, very quickly. I wanted to start with this image that I've been working on for a few weeks or even months now. Uh, and it's basically the species richness uh, and showing where the most diversity of species are on our planet and the amazon jungle is very critical and you can also see there's a portion out here that is even it's actually probably more as critical uh even notice that it's more there's more variety of species in rio de janeiro and off the coast of sao paulo than there is even in the deepest part of the jungle here um, and in fact the deepest part of the jungle is actually this back wall here which is right next to an extremely populated region so we have uh we're going to primarily talk about the amazon jungle tonight uh and what i really want to emphasize is it's you uh it's it's all of us that really need to understand what's going on uh here and what i wanted to say is that we really need there's something missing from my discussion and it's a really spiritual topic um, in terms of the astrophysics and basically as we think about life on our planet and life perhaps on the moon and on mars and even deeper into the universe uh, 
how we work with the life here on our planet is very important. We can't just say we're going to skip working well with animals and life here on our planet and just instantly go somewhere else and say that it's all going to work out. We have to solve the problems right here on Earth first. So uh, working with the jungle here is critical. Um, and basically this diagram, uh, as I explained before, doesn't really explain the, the, the ocean. So this the sad part about this uh, study is that it doesn't include the oceanography and basically the coral reefs and the ocean, right? Um, actually, uh, Southeast Asia becomes extremely important in that discussion as well as the Caribbean. So, uh, and it turns out that Southeast Asia is quite far from Africa, as you will notice, and yet the Caribbean is very close to the Amazon jungle. Excuse me for a second. So I, I am really sorry, but we have to like talk about this in a really awesome way um, that is way out of bounds for a lot of people. Uh, in terms of spiritual knowledge um, and how we look at how things are working on our planet, um, it's just going to have to be an entirely new discussion uh, because we're thinking uh, not just 10 years, 100 years. We're trying to think into a future really different than what we're talking about today. So really what I wanted to say is that uh, we need some really new ideas certainly way better than the ideas that i'm talking about with you right now and so if you have some really creative ideas about how the jungle works man that's really going to matter a lot so what, what i'm saying is that homework about the jungle is going to mean a lot to what life is like on our planet many years from now so uh, as we look at some of this uh, information uh here uh it's going to get a little bit uh, out there, I hope, but I'm going to try to keep it very practical and and obvious as well because uh, basically, uh, yeah, so so how do we start thinking about this? Um, you know, basically, it starts with things, um, you know, it, basically when we talk about the next uh, thousand years, uh, which sounds like a crazy number, uh, the geology is probably not going to change much. Um, so it it's really hard for a lot of this rock to move uh, in the next thousand years or even few thousand years and even getting into a million years, right? So the structure of the planet will probably remain the same, meaning that if we study this geology here, uh, we're going to see that if we can interpret this correctly spiritually, we may unlock some of the keys for what the earth wants. However, um, we also have to think about something very different, uh, which is the spiritual concept of what the wildlife may want, uh, as well as what humanity may want. Um, and actually we may need to take a second or even third place in terms of priority of what we listen to on our planet in terms of what is going to be correct because for example if it works if earth works great for the least organism it's also going to probably work for the best organisms uh, and there's not even there is a sin and i don't mean to say it that way because uh, there's definitely a spiritual question about how different animals think uh and actually um in terms of collaborative thinking, like ants and other kinds of species may think very differently collectively in terms of spiritual spirituality. So there's definitely some interesting questions there. Um, but I wanted to start on this geology map uh, just to give you a very detailed perspective of some interesting thoughts. Um, so it turns out that the geology right along the river here is actually quite different. Um, and actually the depth here, one thing that's not explained well in geology is what depth are we talking about in terms of the geology, right? So it could change as you get deeper in the earth and this may be only at one depth necessarily. So what depth are we talking about? So typically we talk about the surface geology, um, but there is definitely uh, an importance on the three dimensional imaging uh and i would definitely think that that is very important uh to look at um because this for example it may go deeper on this side or that side or not necessarily just in the center um so there's 
uh, interesting questions for how this looks, uh, not just on the surface, but three-dimensionally. So uh, basically, uh, yeah. So, and then other than just the geology, these are the soil maps. And I wanted to emphasize there, I couldn't really get a good image. I wanted to get a very good image of the whole entire thing, but I wanted to get so many details here that I had to divide it up into two sides. And I tried to keep the Caribbean in here so to emphasize the importance of the Caribbean in the discussion, as well as the Andes Mountains. So it's just hard to explain, and you can kind of see that it looks very different here than the geology, right? So you can see the Andes geology here, and it actually gets quite detailed. The mapping is actually even better in the Caribbean than it is in the jungle right now, uh, in terms of the uh, detail that they have tried to work on. So the soil maps are also very helpful, and you can see the south side of the jungle, and there's definitely some areas that you might not think of. This is a very vast floodplain, um, which is not discussed and actually is a very good farmland. So I actually have looked at this area very carefully um, because a lot of the farmland is actually pushing up into the jungle, but actually this floodplain is actually kind of a past floodplain um, it, to some extent. Uh, there's still, uh, actually this is a far safer floodplain than for example, Bangladesh. Um, but uh, still difficult to farm on. But anyway, so uh, there's going to be a lot of topics uh, to basically go through here. Uh, and in terms of the discussion of what's going on with the jungle, um, I have, uh, you know, just a, a lot of images here. So, uh, but basically... Uh, so one of the uncomfortable topics... Uh, in astrophysics, as well as looking at things, you know, like we just looked at the imagery for uh, the next few thousand years, uh, unbelievably, right? Because we have, we actually can look at that. Um, but uh, as we look at the uh, electromagnetic model of our planet, um, there's a lot of things that will change here. So actually the weather patterns could change. Uh, now, I am not in total agreement with um, scientists uh, on the actual locations of these uh, diagrams. A lot of there, there is a lot of mathematics used to try to predict it. Um, however, I think there's some common sense uh, that we can also use um, to understand uh, the fields and how they may change. Uh, now, um, so one of the big discussions starts with the North Pole and the South Pole and the position of this dot right here and that dot right there is actually the magnetic pole, whereas the actual pole is right here and right here. Um, so it's actually very far from the actual pole. You can see um, many, many thousands of miles. Um, so why is that so far off um, is a very important question that has to do with the tilt of our planet. Um, the axial tilt, which is actually about uh, 23 and a half degrees, that number actually resides right up here. So this is the 30 degree angle. 30 degrees is a very common angle if you're familiar with geometry. Um, basically everyone that uses geometry understands how important 30 degree angle is, a 60 and a 90 degree angle. Um, but particularly at a 30 degree angle, um, you have a right triangle and you also have our axial tilt, which is about 23 and a half degrees, right? So it's actually on the tip of Florida. So those numbers are actually very important because that is basically the axial tilt. Um, it, it rocks back and forth on that 23 and a half degrees going up and down. And that's basically the seasons. So the highest the sun will go uh, depends on that axial tilt. Um, in terms of where the sun is centered, right? So uh, that's a very important discussion. So this is the declination field, and if you're not familiar with it, you should maybe try to understand it. But one argument that I would have is that the North America and South America and going down to here, and we also have an Atlantic fault that actually runs almost perfectly down the Atlantic Ocean. Those fault lines probably haven't changed any time in the last few million years. So some of the discussion saying that the declination field changes to these wild degrees um, is debatable um, because actually the, 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 actual, the actual geology hasn't changed. 
And the um, so it, it really has to do with how active our planet is inside of it versus on the surface, right? Um, and that's a very important discussion um, to have. And as you can see, what I've basically come up with is a concept of a of a U and a V line. So you basically see that there's this line coming down through here, and I call this the V line, and I call this the U line. And I think that those are pretty safe arguments to have uh, in this discussion that we probably have a U field here that is quite common uh, and also a V down here. So how does this relate to the jungle? Basically, we have a lot of volcanic activity. So when we look at how the earth works, uh, both the electromagnetic spectrum, spectrum would matter a lot. So you basically, if you're familiar with things, you basically have and I'm sorry to have this conversation because we really want to talk about something called the life field. Um, but when we talk about normal science, uh, typically we're talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, which includes gravity, electricity, and magnetism, um, as well as the strong and weak nuclear forces. Um, but basically what happens is that every force is perpendicular to the last. So if you have a particle that moves any kind of particle in the universe that moves in one direction, there's another field that moves perpendicular to that. So basically what happens is that uh, everything starts to be perpendicular to everything else uh, in this very crazy world that we can't even see. And eventually um, we start to have, well, spirituality and maybe even something called a life field. So. Um, in that discussion, uh, so there's many different ways to look at declination field change. So this is the static field. So that means the field that you see right now. Now, if you have a compass, uh, your compass may be tilted slightly to one direction or the other. And as you can see, there's a blue and a red. And this shows positive declination on the red side and negative declination on the blue side. So that means the compass may be shifted positively or negatively. Uh, in different parts and that actually showed up because when they tried to cross the ocean the compass did not necessarily show north because so if you're using a compass to try to get around earth it does not work well everywhere and in fact it works worse in some of these regions like here you can see over here and even as you get closer to the magnetic poles it actually can flip 90 degrees or even more um, so excuse me 90 degrees uh, so uh, and the point here is that this kind of shows that. Now you can see there's a very interesting diagram called the secular change, and this is the annual change. So we spin around the earth one time in one year, how much does the field actually change? So this is a very powerful argument because you can see it changes 20 degrees in some points, and that's a very significant amount. Can you imagine a 30 degree change in your compass that is a very huge amount of change. Um, so that that's just affecting an actual real object. A metal piece is actually moving 30 degrees in one year. It, the change has changed up to negative 20 or even, you can see here, it's um, so it doesn't really show 30 too often, but around 20 degrees. Um, and that may be uh, just due to the axial tilt. You can notice that it's about 20 degrees, maybe 23 and a half degrees. Um, so that's an interesting point to think about. Moment of silence here for the police department as they probably are finding someone who's not talking very wisely and spiritually about the jungle. And I'm wondering, man. So again, one of the questions here is that we're looking at how the earth works. Um, a very simple concept, uh, and and the police are just getting further and further away. Unfortunately, they haven't come here and got me away from the camera yet. Um, but what I would like to say is that this is a very interesting concept because inclination, as you are near the equator, it turns out that <clears throat> you will be level. But if you get further from either the North Pole or the South Pole, uh, the compass may actually dip in or out more so and actually it can tip out almost 90 degrees and that should make sense to you as you get towards the actual magnetic pole <clears throat> that the compass would actually flip entirely one direction because you're actually on the magnetic pole and so the compass would point straight down or straight up depending on which pole you're at and you can see it's a negative 
field change here and it's almost 80 degrees and you can see you're hundreds of miles away from the magnetic pole and yet the compass is already almost changing 90 degrees into the ground so that's an unbelievable statement to say because even as you get down to south america or even the tip of africa you're already changing 60 degrees uh one way or the other and even in europe the vast majority of europe the inclination change is 60 degrees that's almost 90 degrees that's almost straight up and down you've already changed the compass amazingly so that line actually should work right along the equator and you can notice it's actually perfectly along the equator but for some mysterious reason it shifts up right through the jungle you can see this is through the center of the amazon and actually is slightly above uh the uh, Congo. So the weird thing about this is why is this line, the green line, not right in the very center of the Congo? So <clears throat> if you looked at the, I'm really sorry to do this, this is going to slow down the conversation significantly, but it really helps to see the diagram. Um, so I'm really sorry this is loading very slowly. It's a lot of information. Um, but let me zoom out for a second. So uh, this looks kind of bad, but I'm gonna try to get the colors so you can see uh, as much as possible on this discussion. So uh, I'm sorry if you don't like red, um, but red is the hot areas. So let me see if I can get this, sorry about this. So we're gonna shift over to Africa for a second because it can show you some uh, truth really easily. So you can see that that declination or inclination field line no, sorry about this, guys. I am not very good with this, but I'm trying my best. So, jeez, oh, what am I doing? All right, trying to shift this a little bit. So, uh, what we were trying to explain is that inclination field line is actually higher on the African side and lower on the Amazonian side. Uh, so the equator is actually right through here, um, and you can see that this actually is. It's. It, I didn't make my point at all, but whatever. Uh, so. What I was trying to explain here is that this inclination line actually could be, it actually probably is typically closer to the equator, right? So most of the time it's right at the zero line uh, and you can see it basically follows the zero line through here. Um, but it turns out that the actual side of the jungle is actually slightly below that. Whereas this, the actual center of the jungle is actually almost right on through there. So interesting discussion to have now and it turns out that the inclination change lines are actually easier to understand and more complex because the inclination you can see it's only about five degrees or so at most so that means uh in the uh discussion sorry about this i am trying to see so the inclination may only change slightly compared to the declination which can change a huge amount right so actually the pull in or out of the earth is not well 30 degrees is actually huge so sorry about that so that's a 30 degree change right here at the uh front of the amazon jungle so basically uh you can see that actually it's changed quite a lot on the negative side here and not so much on the positive side so studying this really carefully can really help us understand um kind of what's going on uh in terms of the fields of our earth um another way would be to look at the aurora on the north pole and the uh, and the northern lights and the southern lights um as well as the lightning map so i didn't even just show the lightning map here um it is possible to look at that as well so I wanted to re-emphasize in this discussion essentially how important it is to really jump this discussion as quickly as possible to a spiritual discussion. Um, but one of the things I'm hesitant on is to make absolutely sure that everything that we're talking about spiritually is totally correct. I had a, in, out of bound, in <laughs> a very difficult conversation with a friend of mine tonight, White Gandhi, um, and White Gandhi and I were talking about essentially uh, life on earth and wildlife and spirituality with what's going on with the animals. And essentially one of the difficult discussions is that, you know, spirituality in the United States, I don't even want to talk about it. There was a bad, there was a bad time in the United States where they had these trials 
and it was got get got really crazy spiritually when we first got to the United States. Um, there was a lot of spiritual questions, and they were actually completely against people of any type of spirituality, other than, well, a certain religion. So what happened is that it got really out of bounds, right? And they actually just almost wiped out anyone with any spiritual ideas. So that's a reminder for us to be very careful and never again make mistakes because obviously it is a bad idea to start making spiritual ideas that are just complete nonsense and and completely have no real help to the wildlife. So we really need to rethink about that um, carefully because what we're diving into here is perhaps the biggest concept in knowledge of how to think really differently than how humans think. Because once we start to understand the jungle, we may be extremely surprised uh, with the neuroscience and the spiritual truths that we may come across as we actually are starting to live almost directly in the center of the jungle. Um, and that's not, I mean, we're not even, I'm not even slightly kidding. So basically when we look at these diagrams, we're gonna start to see that the deforestation is actually pushing directly into the center of the jungle. This diagram doesn't even show it enough, but one of the scary things is that we say, oh, there's deforestation here far from the Amazon, but actually Cuba, if we're not doing it correct on land, so it may be that it's a, maybe that maybe we have to have farms, right? But the problem is that once we start fishing as well and we overfish, we kill off all the fish and we dump our waste in the ocean and it ends up just being a complete mess, both on land and in the ocean. So there's actually more responsibility, uh, all the way starting from the Yucatan Peninsula in Cancun, which is a huge vacation spot uh, for a lot of people uh, all over the world. Um, so there's actually, this heads right into this whole chain, which actually goes into Trinidad, and then you see the deforestation coming in through here. So this does not explain how bad it is at all. Um, so, and I wanted to look also because the geology, I, I don't want to forget the importance of how important all the care is of the animals, right? Um, and basically if we, uh, yes, we can understand the geology of the planet, but honestly, uh, the animals may actually understand things way better than we because they live here nonstop year round for thousands or even millions of years. So, but you can see here, I outlined a couple interesting geological regions uh, that didn't really show up on that other map. And you can see on the north side, you basically have um, definitely the responsibility coming in through here and Lake Maracibo as well as Venezuela and a little pocket through here. And this whole river region is a separate region that's not typically discussed. Um, but the more I study this river system here in Venezuela, the more I realize that this is very vital in terms of population uh, and actually getting an easy way into the jungle because a lot of people have come through here um, and it's actually a very important uh, discussion piece. So uh, again, the soil maps, uh, we could probably look at in more detail. There's just uh, hundreds, thousands of details all in these maps um, that I definitely like to discuss. Um, so I wanted to just give you the help so that you could make your own decisions and have access to the maps and kind of make your own ideas. Um, but actually how we listen to the animals is very important here. So. I want to look at this concept of Galapagos Island very carefully and I kind of outlined how um, important because most of the population is actually on this side. Um, so this is an interesting discussion because Lake Maracibo has all this lightning and as you look at the spiritual side of the jungle, it turns out that this lake may be very important uh, in terms of all the lightning strikes. It's actually the world's most important lightning uh, density. However, it's not the most uh, overall, uh, in terms of the per square mile, uh, there's a lot of regions like in Africa and in Louisiana, for instance. Uh, but, uh, and you can kind of see how this 
the river way actually shows an even larger. So this is a very thin pathway, and actually this is quite wide open. And actually that's what's been happening is that a lot of the farming is coming in through this area. And you can see right in here, it's almost completely been, uh, you know, this is radically changed. There's farming all in this area. So, uh, and then actually this is another interesting discussion of how this relates to the Caribbean and you can see all these island chains basically coming all in through here. So if we're doing bad fishing, if we're not treating the fish right, I mean the fish are very, I mean water is vital for life, um, but it all kind of culminates, starts in these Caribbean islands and actually Bermuda and even Florida is very, this is only, you can sail uh, uh, within a day or even a half a day uh, to uh, Bermuda. Uh, from the coast of Florida. So it's just very close uh, to what we're in. We're only talking 90 miles off the coast of Florida there. Um, so here you can start to see uh, some other details. So I just want to jump directly into the uh, maps that really started an important conversation. So we're primarily talking about the Amazon, but I want to show you first uh, the critical detail here. Notice this is all populated and all farmed. And you can see heavy farming right in the center of the jungle. This is the Congo River. This is the deepest part of the jungle, if you remember. And we have farming all up in that river, as well as on the south side. Uh, and then even these little areas in here. So it's just getting way busy. But the crazy part, here's the part that you absolutely need to understand is this map and oops i'm sorry it's over here so whoa, 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 sorry about this it's the species map um where is it sorry sorry so many different maps so this map shows the biodiversity is right here the one fact you need to understand the reason the biodiversity is over here and not directly in the jungle is because it to have biodiversity you have to have a varying you might have to have many altitudes, many different, you have to have mountains, and you also have to have different types of climate because some species can only live in dry weather, some species live in wet weather. So that's why, but if you notice in the Amazon, it's actually, it's actually so diverse. So it actually turns out that the most populated region, this is the scariest part of the conversation, Africa lives in the most populated area of Africa, outside of West Africa, this is probably more populated, Kampala. Um, if I turn off this map, so let me show you, this is the farming map, this is the population map, and this is the farming map, right? So basically, it's the same thing. But <laughs> what I'm trying to explain is that this is huge amount of population. We have 1.2 billion people in Africa. Africa. That's more than there is in India. Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's more than there is almost going to be in China, right? With the kind of growth they're expecting. So, and this is where the biodiversity is. There's a mountain range here, so there's lakes. So the reason that biodiversity shows up on this map right here is because there's all these lakes and mountain region. So it turns out also in Nigeria, where this delta is, if I showed you the same map, if we go over here to Nigeria, you're gonna see, guess what? Right in here is very densely populated, really heavy farmed, extremely heavy farming, right? You see all of this has been completely farmed out and populated. So this cannot happen in the jungle. And so it has to stop immediately going in through these regions. And there's actually way farmed in here. Uh, and it only takes years, like it only takes, you know, it takes it takes an it takes less than an hour to cut down. It takes minutes to cut down a tree uh, that grew for a hundred years, right? That's a scary thing. So, uh, you know, and and we really need to be cautious. Look at the population. Look at the farming here. Let's jump over to the Amazon. So this is going to load kind of slowly. Sorry about this. So this map may not. This is actually, it, it, it's really a debate. So one question is Africans live directly in the jungle. Uh, there's no doubt about it, right? So basically they live in the most diverse places and they live in the deepest parts of the jungle. Uh, 
uh, directly with the animals, cities of millions of people. Um, Kinshasa is an example of that. It's right on the Amazon, right, right in the Congo, right on the Congo River, millions of people. So it doesn't quite happen the same way, but the problem is it happens up in the mountains. So if I show you this population map, I'm going to turn off the farming map. Now, <laughs> the key here is that the situation actually is just as bad or even worse um, because uh, they're actually up in the mountains and different types of animals, like we mentioned, live in different habitats. So they've actually taken over the mountain range entirely uh, and basically now even starting to go deeper into the jungle. So, and you can see the importance of this whole river system as we were discussing earlier. So, and the scary part is that uh, the jungle here actually goes into the Caribbean. Uh, so they're actually very close to the coral reefs. There is not the coral reefs in Africa like there is so close to the jungle here in the Amazon. So there is a very big responsibility with oceans, uh, particularly for Venezuela, uh, right along here and also Colombia and then Panama. Um, and as we were discussing, they don't have to farm in the jungle. They could go do a lot of this farming up in Central America. And you can see Central America is heavily farmed out as well as heavily populated. You can see these are populated regions. Let me turn off, well, anyway. So this is both farming, dark blue is uh, heavy farming. Uh, so anyway, uh, but our heavy population, sorry. So uh, basically what I wanted to do is carefully look at each of these areas. So what I've done is I've basically diagrammed out precisely where the problems are. And actually Bolivia, as you can see, is basically really much, this is Brazil coming in through here, but actually it's even heavier in Bolivia. So, and this actually results, it being okay to farm in here, uh, you know, is a really big debate. So the problem is, is that it may be valid to farm in the, far from the jungle, but the problem is it's on the river. It's at the base of the river. So all of this heads into the deepest part. This is basically Manaus, and there's actually a city here. And they've done a fairly good job of not farming, and I don't believe this map, actually. So this map is not correct. Um, but uh, basically what happens is that what, one of the things I, I just can't emphasize enough is one little speck of dirt in your water. Imagine if you, you know, uh, you know, put a, a, a booger or something in the, you know, or whatever, you know, you're trying to, uh, there's a little thing in your water, you're definitely not going to be happy about that. So uh, that's, imagine all these farms, we're talking millions of people in road waste and everything all flowing down the river here. Uh, and then just farmland after farmland, and then Peru here as well. So, and Ecuador is actually really, really big in problems right now. So, uh, as well as Colombia, you can see here. So it's just not, and you can see there's just a massive city right here in the jungle. So uh, it doesn't, it just doesn't explain the seriousness. I'm really sorry about it. So um, let's jump back to, uh, something for a second. Hold on. So basically, even though these cities are on the border, what happens is that it's probably better to build a city here because you're not polluting the whole entire stream. This city up here ends up polluting the entire stream down from it. Um, but these guys actually depend on farmland. So all of them are many millions. These are some of the largest cities in the planet. Um, and, uh, you can start to see the population uh, here. It doesn't show it too well, sorry. So here you can see the front part of Brazil. So these guys are right, they're very much involved in the uh, discussion because it's really part here, directly, directly heading all the way over to here. So. Uh, and one of the questions is that one person, one person on earth requires at least 10 football fields, 10, right? 10 entire football fields to feed you every year. That's just one person multiply the times a million. 
Then you get to a billion, you're starting to talk about a lot of farmland. That's why you see what is going on here. So, uh, basically, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, anyway, so I want to kind of conclude this discussion because we need to get back to uh, basically uh, really understanding what's going on here. So, um, <clears throat> and <clears throat> uh, there's a separate discussion on Zeus that I kind of wanted to have. Um, so, uh, this is kind of a weird discussion to have uh, based on how to link uh, Africa with South America. Uh, and it turns out there may be some uh, interesting ways to look at that uh, in terms of the discussion as well as even the tip of Africa. Um, so that's a separate discussion to have. Um, but let's just look at this really quickly in case... So Bogota uh, basically is definitely responsible for this uh, jungle problem. Um, and I didn't even include, I really should have included the farming map. So this only shows population. Remember, one little speck here, I think is something like, what is it, how many thousands of people? But uh, many, many thousands or many, many millions, as in Bogota's case, um, so this city basically resulted in farming and there's basically one person requires a hundred football fields, right? So we're basically talking about huge areas. Let's just go back to the map so you can see of that particular region. So we're basically talking about Bogota right in here. And let's see if I got this map correctly. I'm sorry about this. So this is the truth right um it basically um it's really complicated here because also bogota has already completely farmed out uh, colombia has completely farmed out in most of their other regions there's one particular region that i don't want to discuss because even if i discuss it people are going to say well let's farm there so i'm trying to stick to areas that are just absolutely terrible to difficult to, to even discuss but uh, anyway, so you can see there's these small little pockets that be eventually result in uh, going into the deepest part of the jungle. And when you, and this is the worst case scenarios because once you pollute the river here, it gets the whole entire stream. Uh, so you can see further down Qu Quinto, Ecuador. Basically, what's going on here is that the climate is too hot near the equator, so a lot of people moved up into the mountains. Fine, but once you cross the second mountain range here, you're starting to you can't farm, so they completely populated it here. There's no flat land and it's all people, so where do you farm? They farm in the jungle. So basically, this map probably doesn't even show it. Um, but again, you can see they kind of come through here and then around this way. And actually, so Ecuador says, Oh, well, yeah, we're gonna prevent it. There's a city right here, but actually what happens is you end up going a few cities out and then you start coming in again. And quite honestly, this is only a few hours drive or even less into the jungle. So uh, many of these cities, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're not talking about great distances here. Um, and you can see here, I'm trying to explain, um, get the topic entirely off of the jungle and basically look at how to move out of the jungle and basically move up into Central America. One of the hilarious discussions is a lot of people from Mexico try to move to the United States. Mexico is more beautiful than anywhere in the United States. Same thing in China. The coast, of, the south coast of China is way nicer than California. The west coast of Mexico, way nicer than California. So why are people moving here? Well, I don't know. So anyway, there's actually a really lot of great places to live and farm right along the coast and what i wanted to mention is that a friend of mine is a farmer here in town and they farm for hundreds or even thousands of people on a small little couple acre piece of land so a couple acres if you do it correctly you can actually supply food to a lot of people um, and they survived on that until recently when they've recently kind of struggled. So here you can see more of the north side um, here. And you can see how some of these cities uh, in Venezuela, so this is Caracas, actually goes out to here. And then through this city here and here, they're starting to pull right into the jungle. 
So a lot of this might be immediate food uh, and so on. Um, now, again, the discussion is how to get people food. So we have to have food. <laughs> Some of this area may just be the truth. There's no way around it in terms of farming, but we need to really be cautious no matter what the perspective. And then here you can see, this is some of the biggest questions, is actually along the north shore of the jungle. Right here, what we're talking about is all of this. And if you looked at the geology, there's a separate plate on that region. I'm sorry, I can't show the geology here. Let's see if I can get the map really quick. Sorry about this. Um, but yeah, so basically there's this whole separate plate here. So if we really started to understand this, we need to watch this very carefully um, <laughs> in the jungle here because actually if you looked at the rain patterns and a bunch of other things, there's super important stuff all in here to look at. I'm really sorry I can't discuss everything in enough detail as I would like. But anyway, so... Uh, hey, buddy. This guy always barks at night. It's so interesting. I kind of try to pay attention to my neighbor's dog a little bit. I've been talking with him too sometimes. He's He's been explaining some very interesting stuff to me. Sorry, guys. You know, he wants to be on camera or something. Hopefully you guys can listen to him too. He wants better dog food. I, I will not have another animal anymore because I have to feed it like actual real food. I will not feed animals dog food anymore. You guys understand anything else he's saying? Anyway, he's probably pissed about the dog food. So, I would be too. Um, anyway, so, as we start to change this conversation 180 degrees and look at the world totally different, Beyond the geology, beyond the even the 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 uh, electromagnetic spectrum, anything anything we can possibly imagine, and start to understand really how these animals, what they need, right? How to work with the animals and take have them take care of us, and we try to help them out. You know, like it's not just I, I couldn't believe like what happened. Like the other day, I realized you know what we're doing? We're going into their houses. We're cutting down all their trees. We're polluting their water and then we're actually just killing them like that is terrible it, like there's nothing worse like we can't i can't think of anything worse that we can do like we're, we're doing the worst thing we can we can't be doing that so uh and spiritually we got to really rethink about everything so again we're looking at the back side of here there's a whole nother perspective and and man uh if I turn on the other details here, I'll turn on one more time so you can see. I'm really sorry about this. Uh, but this front area, there's other areas. We have to start learning how to work with the jungle far away from the jungle. Notice that Brazil actually has a piece of the jungle right in here and further out down here uh, where Bolivia is doing some of their most heavy farming. This is actually just like the jungle. There's a lot of habitat that used to live through here and we need to figure out what we're doing. Protecting it by many hundreds of miles uh, <laughs> and all throughout here. So there's just a huge region that we really need to rethink <laughs> about entirely. Um, and it's really sad to say, hey, you can't live in the jungle, but <laughs> we need to rethink about what we're doing here because something's something doesn't seem good. And I wanted to show you just an absolutely terrifying image and, and I really shouldn't be showing you this image, but look at what the situation is. I, I, this is going to get out of bounds. So yeah, Africa, sure. We're doing a lot of farming here. Look at India. The question is undisputable here. They have farmed everything. They've populated everything. Is this what we want to happen to the Amazon jungle? To the Congo jungle? <laughs> I mean, this is not good, okay? We absolutely cannot let this happen. To the jungle right we have to really make sure that that doesn't happen and rwanda and these guys right here are at the most diverse place on our planet there's no other place other than this region right here that is more diverse and anywhere in our solar system we can spend the next million years traveling to mars traveling to everywhere else in the universe and it will never be as diverse as this 
<laughs> for a very long time. We got lightning. There's never going to be lightning and all these other things happening like what we have here. So we absolutely have to figure this out. And if we want to start working with so-called alien life, alien spirituality, or whatever you want to call it, God and everything, we're going to have to get this figured out <laughs> really well. So what we're doing here, and this is the eye. This is, this is a very funny image because this is kind of an eye looking out from the jumbo. Um, there's so many other topics I'd love to talk about. I want to get off talking about this immediately and let other people start to look at what's going on themselves and trying to work with people. Um, so you can see this is the jungle here. Um, and every little detail matters. You can see how heavily a lot of people said, oh, in Manaus, this river doesn't matter. This river doesn't matter. This river, you know what's happening? They're just going to populate it all the way through here. Are you kidding me? It's going to pollute. Even though they start here, it there's millions of people that live here. It's going to pollute the entire river all the way down. That means no life. Every time an animal goes to drink water here, they're all going to be suffering. And the same thing goes here. You can see there's major cities up in here. This is Manaus. <laughs> it's the same problem. So and then further, all the way into the back jungle, we're starting to have, they're feeding this. So this whole area could very well be polluted. And there's just, it, there's just uh, huge questions that we need to look at. So part of it on the spiritual side means, hey man, just be nice. Like learn to work better with the animals. I'll tell you a last story to end the conversation. The other day, I was trying to help my friend out. He doesn't even have housing. He's really struggling. He's almost freezing in the cold as we speak right now. And we were trying to find him housing. And we parked near the local food store because we need to think about food and housing. And mysteriously, I went behind the food store and I noticed that there was a farm behind the food store. And the first time I realized, man, this is the way to do it. This is, you have to have a farm right next to your grocery store. And there was a university farm located directly behind the grocery store. And as I drove into uh, the farm, I was very cautious, first of all, I hate driving, but I was very cautious about the birds and the animals because I knew that they were watching me extremely carefully. And what I would warn you is that starts with how we treat the animals and the birds and even your pet and all that other stuff. So be very cautious and realize that these birds travel many thousands of miles and we can start spiritually working on talking with the birds and even listening to the birds about what the problem is. Um, and it realized to me, my brother works in neuroscience and headaches are a very important topic. And we have to think about headaches for the animals. Uh, when your dog drinks or eats food, it oftentimes leaves little particles in the food and that eventually turns into this white mess on the top of your water bowl that is actually bacteria and makes your dog sick or even gives it a headache and your dog can actually die from it or even get cancer or other problems. So basically what I'm trying to suggest here is that listen to the animals and we have to start thinking about that really carefully. It's entirely gonna change Earth a lot, right? Uh, neuroscience not only of humanity but also of the wildlife um, and I really pray that everyone can work together um, we have some very smart people um, in the jungle uh, who know what's going on exactly um, I have many friends in Brazil uh, and in other countries now um, that I'm slowly starting to get to know and I'm very excited to try to get to know uh, what they're working on uh, even in the Caribbean and all around the world uh, so it's really exciting because we all have the ability to work together and we can help them <laughs> even get out of the situation that they're in. Um, so uh, anyway, thank you so much. I really hope that this has helped you out. <laughs> this has not helped enough. I'm really sorry um, about this discussion and I really hope that um, you know we can really uh, <laughs> you know really work on this problem because uh, it's not a good situation. So. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time on your busy day to try to study this. And please um, try to uh, look at all the details um, and work with people. Thank you so much.